tonight's story is called Mr. Meddle's Parcel. And we can see a picture of Mr. Meddle here looking very wet and carrying a parcel with some paper around it, but it seems to be unwrapping itself because it's so wet. I wonder what's happened. Shall we find out? Yes. One day, Mr. Meddle went to get his shoes from the menders. The mender is someone who mends shoes. Do you know what to mend means? No. When something is broken, you mend it. For example, if you have a hole in your shoes, well, today we probably buy a new pair of shoes, but in the old days, when you had a hole, you'd take it to the cobbler. The cobbler is somebody who repairs shoes or makes shoes, and they'd mend your shoes by sewing them up or putting some extra leather where the hole is or putting a new heel on. The cobbler would do the work to mend the shoes. If you have a hole in your trousers, your mother would mend the hole by darning it. She'd darn it with a, 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 a needle and thread, and she'd go like that until she'd darn the hole or darn the socks to make out, get rid of the hole in the socks. And if you have a toy and it broke and you ask your daddy to mend it, I would mend it for you if I could, perhaps by gluing it together or whatever was, we'd have to find out what was broken if it was, if it was repairable. But if, if, it's, if it's repairable, I would mend it. If I had a toy and, and it was broken and you could fix it and everything could fix it, it, that would be sad. It would, we'd have to throw it away, wouldn't we, if it yeah. was broken, really? Like my, like my monster truck, my black monster truck, nobody can mend it, and yeah. neither you, neither, neither mommy, neither everything. Nobody, no, nobody can mend it. Not me, not you, not mummy. Not anybody. Oh, so there's a, there's a book, and there's a, and there's a, a, a tool in my, in my, my T-Rex is Tommy, and that's, that's, come, nobody can get it in the exactly. tummy. Exactly, not you, not me, not mummy, not anybody. Not, there's nobody. Exactly, nobody could get it, it's no, stuck in the tummy. No giant, no robot, no big robot, no little robot. No, no robot which can fly, or big robot can fly, no little robot can fly, there's nothing can fix it. Correct. Or make it. Shall I read? Yes. One day, Mr. Meddle went to get his shoes from the menders. They were ready for him, so he paid, paid the bill and took up the brown paper parcel. So his shoes were in a brown paper parcel, wrapped up in string, I expect. Off he went, meaning to go straight home. But of course he didn't. He met Mr. Jenks, who was sitting on the seat by the bus stop with a lot of other people waiting for the bus. So down sat Medal and began to talk. Mr. Jenks caught the next bus, and then, as Meddle didn't know any of the other people on the seat, he picked up the parcel beside him and set off home. But he picked up the wrong parcel. What did he do? Huh? What did Mr. Meddle do? He took what? somebody else's parcel by mistake. Yes. Instead of taking his parcel, which contains the shoes, which had been mended at the he, cobblers. He, he wasn't, the man who owns that parcel wasn't looking. But he took somebody else's parcel and left behind his shoes in his parcel. It, 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 he, the man who owns that parcel didn't look. He was just waiting for the bus. Hmm. He was just looking and straight there. So, let's not, read it. Not that way. He pick, but he picked up the wrong parcel. He had put his parcel down on the left side of him, and the one he picked up was on his right side, and that parcel belonged to the big man there. But the big man didn't notice for a while. It, it was cheese. He just sat and smoked his pipe. Well, it does look like cheese, but we'll see. I don't know. It must be. Medal went home, 
swinging his parcel by the string and singing a song at the very top of his voice. But he hadn't gone very far when he heard someone shouting behind him. He looked round. It was the big man, and he was shouting very loudly, Give me that parcel! Give me that parcel! Goodness gracious, said Mr. Meddle to himself, quite alarmed. What does he want my parcel for? He must be a robber. So Meddle began to run as fast as he could. Stop! Stop! yelled the big man behind him. I say, stop! And I say, go on! panted Meddle to himself. Oh no! Oh my! Oh my! Who'd have thought I'd meet robbers like this? So Mr. Meddle thinks the man who's chasing him to get his parcel back isn't uh, is, is a robber. He doesn't know he's taken the wrong parcel and he's running away. So now it looks like Mr. Meddle's the rob robber to me. Mr. Meddle tore on and on. The man tore after him, getting angrier and angrier. Give me that parcel, yelled the man, who was really catching Meddle up now. Never, never, shouted back Meddle. He turned in at a gate, meaning to take a short cross a farm across Farmer Straw's field. It was very muddy and wet. Soon poor Meddle had lumps of clay on his boots, and he could hardly run at all, because the clay was sticking to his boots, slowing him down. He staggered as he went. But the big man behind him was in the same state. He couldn't run either for his boots, and he had great lumps of clay all over them. But he made up for his slowness by his shouting. Stop! I say stop! I won that parcel! Well, you won't get it then, shouted back Mr. Meddle. He stumbled over the field and at last came to the stream. This was usually so small that Meddle could jump over it quite easily. But today it was swollen. What was swollen? I don't know. The stream was swollen. There was a lot more water than usual. It was big. It was usually a little stream that big, but today it was swollen, very fat, like a giant fat tummy. Although I don't know if a stream can be like a fat tummy, but it was swollen anyway. It's very, very over, much bigger than usual. He stumbled over the field and at last came to the stream. This was unusually, this was usually so small that Meddle could jump over it quite easily. But today it was swollen and wide and deep, for there had been a heavy rain. Meddle wished he hadn't got to jump, but there was nothing else to do. So he jumped. But of course, he landed right in the middle of the stream. His parcel got very wet, and by the time he waded out of the stream on the other side, the paper was giving way. Meddle sat down on the bank, bank panting and puffing. He felt quite sure that the big man wouldn't try to jump, for he had seen what had happened to Meddle. <laughs> the man didn't jump. He stood on the other side of the stream and shouted once more to him. You silly! You've spoilt my parcel! Medal thought the man must be quite mad. He held up the parcel, which was rapidly coming undone, and shouted back, It's my parcel! Is it Medal's parcel? No. It's not, is it? It's the man's parcel, but he doesn't know, because he took the wrong one. Medal shouted back, It's my parcel! It's got my boots inside! You won't rob me of them if I can't help it. If I can help it. The paper slid away and big drops of water fell all over metal. 
he stared at the wet paper and he stared and he stared and he stared for in the parcel were not the boots that he had expected but a very large nice slab of cheese that spelt that smelt exceedingly good but it was quite spoiled by the water good gracious said metal what's happened to my boots you left them by the bus stop you silly donkey said the man impatiently you took my cheese instead and here i've been shouting and running after you for ages and all you do is yell back something rude at me jump into a stream and spoil my cheese i'm really very sorry very sorry said middle in a small voice really very sorry indeed well you won't be sorry you'll you well being sorry won't win my cheese said the big man you'll have to pay for that oh certainly said middle i quite see that i'll send you the money tomorrow oh no you won't said the big man firmly you'll come across this stream again and you'll give me the money now after all you've got to go back to the seat to fetch your boots haven't you and you'd better hurry to in case someone goes off with them what do you think would happen if someone goes off with his boots um that would be that would be stealing wouldn't it yes because it's not their boots i hope nobody goes off with medals boots you left them on the bus stop seat you silly donkey said the man impatiently you took my cheese instead Dear me, so so I had said poor middle. So into the stream he had to jump once more. He waded across and paid the large man what he asked. Then he crammed the soaked cheese into his pocket and set off back to the to the seat, the bus stop seat, to get his boots. The parcel was still there, thank goodness. Middle undid it to make sure it really did hold boots this time, not cheese or something extraordinary. Yes, it was his boots, all right. So at ho so home at last went middle with a pair of m mended boots, a pocket full of jip dripping wet cheese, and no money. And if I know anything of metal, he'll go to bed tonight, leaving the cheese in his pockets, and he'll wonder why his bedroom is suddenly overrun with hundreds of mice, won't he? Why? Why? Do you think, if he's got cheese in his pocket, why do you think mice are going to come? Because they're not. Because they're going to eat the cheese. That's right. It's their favourite food, isn't it? That's how you catch a mouse. You have cheese in the mouse trap. So, uh, uh, let's get you to sleep now. Daddy, do, are you, I, can you tell me another story? Uh, I can't. I'm going to sleep myself. But I'm sure we can listen to one if you like. As you <coughs> oh, you have to lie down now, so I'll put one on, all right? After it random again, as usual. Because I never know what story I'm going to put on. Oh, I know. Check in the